Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Big D's and Liam's Custom Garage. This is Monday's episode. I'm Big D. And I'm Liam. So today what we are going to do is we're going to take the probably one of the tires off the front end of Project Dark Sin and we're going to have a look at the rotors and see if I can clean them up by hand without having to have them turned. Um, they've never been driven on. They're stainless steel uh, brake rotors, but they got a whole bunch of built up surface rust on them from sitting. So we're going to see if they're going to be easy to clean up or not. So that's pretty much what we're doing today. And we're going to do it in normal speed because if we do it in hyperlapse, this video would go so fast, it would be pointless. So yeah, um, we're trying to beat the heat today and the humidity. It's gonna be really crazy today. Thank God the rest of the week, it's actually gonna cool off. So yeah. So with that being said, we are going to go over and start working on Project Dark Set. Okay guys, I'm going to start with pulling the tire off. Um, for those of you that have never removed a tire before, uh, if your car happens to have a wheel lock, this is the one particularly for this car, and you use it only on one lug nut, they're lit and they only go on one way, there we go. They're anti-theft, basically. Or they're supposed to be. Okay, so I'm going to take this off. There's ways around certain types. So yeah. Sometimes you can get on them with vice grips and shit, but, you know. If people put them on too weak. Yeah. Okay. That one came right off. Let's show you what it looks like. It makes some bit pretty big pairs See? of vice grips, yeah. You can get on... That's your wheel lock there. Oh, it also comes with a washer. Yeah. Actually, all these lug nuts have washers behind them. So, yeah. Okay. Another one. Off. Okay. Man, I keep dropping the washers in the back of the wheel. Okay. Oh, come on, Clad, stick around. Yeah, they're going to start burning off while we're trying to get this done quickly. Oh, summertime in Arizona. I was thinking we take the rotors off completely and clean them in the garage. Well, I want to see if it can be done this way first because taking the rotors completely off is not great. No, it's not. Okay. Um, tire, we need we've never hold, showed you guys this before, but from the car sitting for so long in the Arizona heat, these were brand new tires or ish. brand new ish when it was parked in the t rubber has literally, the tread has literally separated from the tire. Yeah. And then back here from it sitting on the concrete for so long, it has like this. Dead spot. Almost melted spot. Yeah, dead spot. Yeah. It, it's crazy. And it's the only tire out of all four that did that, which is really weird. All right, hopefully. Uh, okay, so here's our here's our aftermarket rotor and our aftermarket uh I believe this is this a dual piston or single piston calipers on the front? Dual. Okay, so we got dual piston. Um, pretty much one SS BC force tens, yeah. uh, rotors, brand new pads, of course. Okay, let's see here. Oh, they move, yeah. Let's Take some brake cleaner to them. I'm gonna hit it with a little brake clean. No look there. Okay, I'm gonna try a little steel wool. See if any of it will come off. Oh, it's not. 
Surface rust is coming right off. There's yeah. some bad spots though. I'm thinking... Wire brush. Is that the, they always had the weird color to them right now. Did they always have weird color to them? Or they, they were polished, weren't they? Okay, let's try this again. Well, that answers my question, guys. Yeah, we're gonna have to do a little more work on them. A little more work? <laughs> no, they're gonna have to be turned. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, because there's pitting already. Which is really weird because these are supposed to be stainless steel rotors and stainless steel doesn't rust. Or no. it's not supposed to anyway. It's probably not that good quality stainless steel. Um, anyway, uh, real quick, I'm going to need the uh, Allen head sockets for the rotor. A flathead screwdriver for the bearing cap, which I'm going to have to replace because Dad beat the living crap out of them <laughs> and split it. You don't need to beat. <laughs> okay. Hooch off. All right. Screwdriver. Uh, Allen sockets. Oh, and... Um, Needle nose pliers to pull the cotter pin out with. Alright, we'll get those parts together and be right back. Yep. Okay, guys, me and Liam have switched off because that's what we decided to do today. We were going to take turns. So, right now, he is taking the two bolts out of the back side of the brake caliper. I'll come around and show that to you over here okay we're going the right way thanks yeah yeah you got it so these are allen head style uh bolts for this um, most of the time your factory ones will be like a, a half inch or a nine sixteenths socket. Oh, they is on there good. Reposition it and tap it with your fist. you're sending shock waves through it and it nor they'll normally break loose when you're doing that oh oh shite and i don't think we have a big enough breaker bar oh that works there we go <laughs> didn't think about that I have a hammer next to you use, use it, it. that's right <laughs> So once this is off, you guys will get a better look at the front suspension. Conies, the one, conies and springs. Yeah, that was one of the things I was going to tell you guys about. That's being a pain. Yeah, normally the bottom one can be sometimes, especially if they weren't lubricated before they got put in. And I'm guessing they weren't lubricated. You can lubricate them with a little bit of petrol petroleum jelly. And it makes them kind of work better. Especially since your brake pads float on there. On those two, they have to be able to, uh, um, yeah, float. Well, this one's going out by hand, so there's something on there. Okay. So he did put some type of lube on there. Did you pull the bottom one out yet? Yeah. You got to pull them all the way out. There you go. Okay, here comes the twin piston caliper. Probably going to need to tap it with a hammer. Then a little bit 
on the bottom, and then one more on the top. <laughs> you have to walk them out, basically. Especially when it's been sitting as long as it has. Wow. Yeah, it's she on there. She same as frozen place because of the rusted caliper or the rusted uh, rotors. Okay. Put these on the frame rail. So they have no fenders. Yeah, since the inner fender walls are gone, we just relax them right up there like that. Unfortunately, this doesn't just slide off. No. And that's what Liam's going to do next. That's why I got the flathead screwdriver and the hammer and all that out here. For those of you that have never done this before, you first remove your dust cap, which is what Liam's doing now. I'm going to narrate. <laughs> this, is, this is a learning episode. So, you use a very, very thin flathead screwdriver. Or make one. <laughs> or make one using a grinder. <laughs> and you basically, you go all the way around it, kind of like you would like a paint can. Ooh, that was packed. You pop that out. Now, he packed, packed it a little much <laughs> with grease. Uh, yeah, William, turn that dust cover over and so I can show them uh, what, no. That so I can show them why I'm going to be needing to replace them. Switch it, flip it over. Yeah. Okay, that right there, guys, is unnecessary. Yeah. That should not be dented and banged up like that at all. Yeah. If you're having that much trouble putting your dust cover in, you put too much grease in it. You either put too much grease in like it, like this, or it's not the right size. Yeah. So, please, people, use a rubber mallet. You never hit them on the center of the cap anyway. You tap them around the outside edge and walk yeah. them in. If you have a pipe the same size, it's best to put it over. Oh, yeah, that too. If you got a socket or a pipe that actually will fit the outer diameter of this That's that you could hit with a hammer, you That's the perfect ideal yeah. for putting it in there. You can put as much grease as you want in there. Yeah. Okay, so now what Liam's got to do, he's got to take some of the Still grease, grease. out. On off my fingers. <laughs> because there's a cotter pin. Somewhere in there. In there. That holds the spindle nut in place. There's nothing wrong with the it, grease. It's just a lot of it. Yeah, there's yeah. It's all brand new grease. It's never been driven on. It just got a little overpacked. Yeah, you want to pack them, but not quite that much. Just fill them up. Yeah. You don't have to compress everything. No. Yes, it will thin out as it's getting driven on. But damn. Yeah, there is actually. See, there's a nut under there. See? Yeah. See, there's that's your spindle nut that they holds your brake rotor on and then there's a cotter pin that goes through that um okay cotter pin was bent over which is what Proper. you're which is what you're supposed to do you drive it through which we'll show you in a future episode but you drive it through that hole that he's pulling it out of and then once it's all the way through the hole, you bend the ends of it over the top. You're going to need new pins, too. One side's broken. Yeah. And the pins are cheap. You can get them at any auto parts store for a couple bucks. And it's not that big of a deal. Okay. So now with the cotter pin off. We don't have a socket for that. No. And I forgot to grab a pair of pliers. <laughs> so. Pause. <laughs> Uh, yes, we will pause or stop. hit pause and we will be right back. Okay, guys, we got our pair of pliers. Liam is taking the spindle nut off. Now, uh, while me and Liam were getting the pair of pliers, we realized that once we take this off, I can't put the front tires back on. <laughs> so... What we're going to do after we're done showing you guys this 
process. We're gonna put them back on dry, no grease, no no king or no uh, pin. We're just gonna put them on basically loosely dry so we can at least keep the front tire on yeah. so we're not getting harassed by people. Okay, now Liam's got to do this very slowly because you got a washer and bearings in the front of the rotor. I'll have Liam pull those out with his finger and show them to you real quick. Or something that won't get, that don't yeah. care, gets greasy. Yeah. They're all in here. Here's the bearing. Okay, so that's, that's your top bearing and your uh, washer. And then there's your bearing race down in your spindle. And then basically you got, or not your spindle, your rotor. And then you basically got the same thing on the back side. Now you can see on this horn here, because that was protected by the, the rim, but you can see what the rotors are supposed to look like. That kind of stainless steel, shiny-ish metal right there that I got my finger on. So, but you can see, I got the camera down close enough now. You guys can actually see there is pitting mm -hmm. in the rust. So, yeah, they're definitely going to have to be turned. They're not going to be able to clean out the air grooves. That kind of sucks. But We can try to wire brush it out as much as possible. Yeah, we can probably hit it with a little steel wool and get the bigger shit out of it. At least so, at least so yeah. can, air can actually be get out of those channels. Yeah. It, it basically it helps the air and brake dust escape and not build up yeah. under there. So and it's a lightweight design, so they're not the la designed yeah. to last very long anyway. No, so we're gonna get those cleaned up. Um, on Wednesday's episode, guys, we are going to continue doing this, but we're gonna do the back um, passenger side. So we can show you guys how to remove the rotors off the back because it is a different setup than up here. Slightly. Yeah, just slightly, but it is a different setup. Um, now, real quick, I want to show you guys. Okay, we still are running right now the stock upper A-arms and the stock lower a arms but we have our aftermarket uh coney shocks and our two inch drop or no they're three inch drop aren't they no two, two. I didn't want to go too big. yeah we got our two inch drop uh hotchkiss springs and then there's our uh hotchkiss uh end links and then our gigantic hotchkiss anti-sway bar on there Gigantic. yeah now i will be before the car is running and going down the track hopefully i will be replacing the upper and lower control arms or a arms uh the reason why we didn't do it originally was because at the time no one made aftermarket uppers was it uppers or lowers? Uppers. They were all lowers. Yeah. The easy ones. Yeah, the uppers. They didn't make the uppers. Because they're so weirdly yeah. shaped. But now everybody and their fucking brother makes them. So, you yeah. You get them fairly cheaper than they used to be. Yeah, so we're going to... We will be completing the aftermarket suspension at some point. The A-arms literally are only the stock components of the suspension left. And we even put brand new uh, polyurethane bushings and shit in them. In the A-arms, yeah. So we can... Uh, and it has polyurethane body bushings, too. Yes. So... Well, there's one right there. I don't know if you guys can see it all that well. Right there between the frame rail and the body. But that's one of the polyurethane body bushings that got put in. Yeah. This car is hell stiff. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. She's going to be wicked. Yeah, not just in a straight line. No, and yes, not just in a straight line. I will be doing other things with this car. Anyway. I, mean, I mean, with this suspension, why wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's got the suspension for it, so why not? Yeah. 
It can be a multi-purpose car. I can drag race it. I can freaking road route or road core or not auto cross it. That's it. Yeah, that word. Yeah, I can auto cross it and all that. But yeah, anyway, that was, that was okay. So on the back side, that's your bearing and stuff, but it's held in with this seal. Yeah. That gets tapped in, and then your your lug nut studs, mm. those are driven in. That's why. We realized, hey, we can't put the tires back on if we don't have the rotors on there. So, so, yeah. So, we showed you guys how to take the front rotors off. Um, Wednesday, we'll show you how to do the backs, and then we're going to take them down to a local brake shop and have them all four turned, hopefully. And then uh, we'll come back and show you guys how to reinstall all this stuff the proper way and without beating up the yeah without beating up that the dust cover mm. and shit yeah we'll show you how to pack the bearings the right way clean your spindle off always clean the spindle off before putting everything back together i don't care if the grease is new or not yeah we're gonna put it back together now <laughs> yeah so we will yeah, we will be right back with our outro. See you guys in a second. Okay, guys. So, we're done putting the tire and stuff back on the car. Uh, like we said, um, Wednesday, we'll show you guys how to do the back. And, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for today's video. We will see you guys again on Wednesday. Thank you for watching and supporting us. We really, really do appreciate it. Please click the like button on our videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. We really, really appreciate it. And hit that bell over in the corner so you get first alerts every time we upload a new video. So again, thanks for watching today's episode of Big D's and Liam's Custom Garage. I'm Big D. And I'm Liam. We're out.